Hello everybody, my name is Coach, Coach, just Coach, and I'm going to explain for you the Garden City 9, which is a 15 second sudden death play that you can run if you can host Long Island Lacrosse in Orange County, California. Now, if you're a qualified lacrosse coach, you can figure out what's going on in this play just by looking at the picture. Here I have drawn a crease, an 8 e meter fan, a 12 meter fan, 7 attackers represented by O's, and 7 defenders represented by X's, 1 goalie represented by an X. Everything on this picture should make sense to somebody competent enough to draw up their own kind of place. And um, if you just so happen to be the only coach in Orange County girls lacrosse who can do this, you must have gotten rid of a few other um, defensive-minded players and coaches in your area who can defend this. So sorry, I'm not gonna care if you already know how to run this play. And your name is Christina Nicole Johnson. If you have less than 15 seconds to win a game in sudden death, it is it is really important to one have the ball. And if you have the ball with a timeout left, use that timeout before the one minute mark if you can in sudden death. If you have 45 seconds left in a game, you can still score one goal in sudden death to win the whole thing. I'd rather score one goal in less than 30 seconds than go into double, triple overtime in a championship game. Okay, so the girls here are arranged according to the offense. The offense is going to dictate where the defenders go. If the defenders were running a zone kind of defense, um, the defense is usually set up in six zones with one backer, and that structure of the defense is really good at defending against a lot of kinds of offense. So, the offenders here have decided to make a very lopsided kind of offensive formation with multiple threats available in case any of these girls need to go score. But what I think they chose to do right after, um, using the last time out to run through a whiteboard session is they said here's a person here's um here's our best dodger our best assister and our best shooter if she went one-on-one -on -one against any defender on the other team she would win if she could not be the best defender on the other team um maybe they would have made sure that she had a matchup that she could win she can also assist anybody else on the team. If she uh, beats the defender and she is one-on-one -on -one with the goalie after that, she has to be the kind of shooter who can place a good shot because the goalie in this, in this previous um, two minutes of overtime made a pretty amazing save to open up the uh, sudden death. And um, after drawing up a play, that they've probably rehearsed before. This um, Garden City 9 offense scored. So I'll just uh, let you stare at the picture a little bit more. I will not really explain the rest of things unless you want to steal my trade secret or secrets and like plagiarize all of this intellectual property. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's like a college play though. So if you see this play in college, um, you most definitely already know what's going on with an ISO right here Who can with a ball carrier who can dodge assist and shoot this ball carrier? Going 1v1 against a defender with less than 45 seconds to go on a clock can use maybe 10 seconds of those to do her first dodge if it doesn't work um, She can use the next five seconds of that last 45 seconds of the game to re-dodge if she just cannot beat that defender the options she has might be to move the ball once
to her outlet. Maybe that outlet is left-handed. Maybe that outlet can beat her defender 1v1. Mm, that would be wonderful. It goes from here, if a left-handed defender, I mean offender, can um, beat a defender and score, game over. Or, you know, if the dodges don't work up here, and um, your best dodger, a sister and shooter, just decides to dump the ball to somebody else who can catch and shoot and score on the run or under pressure, uh, she has options right here. The options over here are her offenders who are watching her work the ball. And as um, teammates who are occupying their defenders and opening up space for this um, offender to dodge and go to goal, well, pretty much alone, they will know their team leader's body language well enough to leave this little muddle and ask for an assist in space if this ball carrier needs one. That's got to be some IQ from the decoys over here. But usually in Orange County, California, when the ISO is given to the best player on the team, those teams are so lopsided that the best player on the team is too selfish to give up the ball. And the other players who are not involved in the play are too dumb to know how to time cuts. Unfortunately, Orange County, California lacrosse probably can't run this play unless coaches drill it into their girls after learning it from me. Let's just say that the isolated offensive player cannot score within maybe eight seconds. She can move the ball here and the ball can move here. The whole offense can rearrange. Uh, maybe the muddle moves over to this side as soon as the ball is passed from here to here and the um, the low attacker with a strong right hand and maybe um, really fast feet beats whichever defender is left over when the muddle moves and crease rolls and shovel shot the winning goal into Goal. Um, that's just a play with multiple options. Every seven uh, attackers on this offense has to know what the play is, and they have to have the IQ and the awareness, body awareness, spatial awareness, and uh, creativity to know what to do if things don't go according to plan. And unfortunately, if you watch any of the high school girls across teams in Orange County, California. Try Garden City 9 on a Long Island girls lacrosse team right now. None of them would be able to do this. Maybe one, maybe one um, cheating, lying lacrosse team, maybe. But, you know, from my measurements and my um, calculations, this play would not click with the biological makeup of every mentally ill kid in Orange County, California, who is not paid for by stolen time and borrowed blood.